What's going on guys? This week we're going to be doing a review for the new Purity Killer Box, an animation throwdown. First up, let's take a look at the legendary pre-combo of the box, Assassin Bender. So here are my thoughts on this pre-combo. It is definitely going to be an offensive pre-combo for sure, just by looking at its stats alone. It has a 17 attack and a 50 HP base, so not horrible. I am happy that it is above the 50 mark there, or actually I should say it's right there at the 50 mark. Um, Skill-wise, I actually do like it for its, um, its skills there for offense. It does have Craze, which is a really good one to have on offense, and I like that it has some Leech in there to help kind of be a self-healer. My biggest gripe with pre-combos when they are not defensive ones is they can get taken out pretty easily, but because this does have Leech that will keep it alive a bit longer, which could work in its favor to just help outbuild its attack there with its craze value to get just high enough to where it'll start to overcome your opponent's cards. The 8 bomb damage is also really nice to just help do some extra damage on some flank cards there as well. I also think this is going to be a great pre-combo to run for a Futurama Siege Island, both on offense and defense, because with that 25% island buff it would get in Siege mode, this would be a pretty over-the-top um, pre-combo card there. So, all in all, not too bad. Generally speaking, I do like to go off of um, go off of the defensive stats for pre-combos when I am looking for a box to dip into for a deck. So I do prefer um, defensive ones personally. However, as far as offensive ones go, I don't hate this one. It actually does look like it's pretty good for that. Now that we got the legendary pre-combo out of the way, let's take a look at the legendary items. First up is going to be the new item, Purity Dads. So this is actually a pretty nice looking item. I do like its stat breakdown there. I like that its HP is at 50. You guys know me by now. I love any card that has 50 plus HP because that works out phenomenally in any defense deck to give it a better chance of survival, especially at the higher levels of play. I also really like that its skills there favor defense as well. You got the Sturdy and the Hijack. Both of those are fantastic skills to run on defense. So the Sturdy is going to help this stay alive a bit longer as well. And the Hijack is really good to kind of just block your opponents from crazing against you. Craze is a very popular skill to run when attacking in any um, in any deck, but specifically for armed, there are quite a few. Um, quite a few combos that have craze. Same with Athletic, a lot of those have crazed as well. And if you didn't know, which I don't know why you wouldn't because it says it right there in the game, but for those who didn't know, those are the two active battleground effects right now for armed and cra armed and um, athletic, not crazed. Sorry guys, I'm talking about crazed and it got sidetracked there. But yeah, armed and athletic, those are the current ones running right now. Um, I do believe both will be running side by side during this next rumble as well. So. Hijack is not a bad thing to have on defense to try to just protect your card wall and kind of stall out your opponents. The jab is nice too because I do believe the um, the buff this time around on armed cards is going to be 20% shield to their HP. So that's going to be a good way for it to just kind of chip on through the shields and, and ignore them, or at least ignore a good chunk of them. So yeah, all in all, I am really digging this new item here. Um, I would also say it is really good on defense, but you can run it offensively as to 12 attack is by no means bad. It's still pretty average on that for the attack stat. But all in all, let's take a look at those combos to really decide where this will belong in your deck. As you can see here, Purity Dads currently combos with 52 different cards across the game. I'm only going to be touching on my top favorite combos for it, and we're not going to be going over every single combo, but I will be highlighting some ones that I think you guys definitely should know about and consider putting in your decks. We're going to start out with the legendary combos, and we'll go over the mythics at the end. So the first combo we're going to look at here is with Chris Griffin to make Screw Drive Chris. This is a new combo they just added in for, um, for Armed, and I gotta say, I'm really digging it. I love its skill set there. It has Sturdy, which is great. I absolutely love Sturdy on pretty much any combo or card because it helps protect it from dying and keeps it alive a bit longer. It also does have Shield All on it, which can go to any card. That is not a limited Shield All that's just limited to a single trait or show. No, that is just across the board Shield All, which is great support. And on top of that, you have the ever handy Craze stat there, so its attack will be climbing higher and higher, turn over turn, until it becomes a complete monster. 
One thing to keep in mind is the preview on you're seeing on the screen here. It's just showing what the base cards make. When you make this combo with the um, quad fuse versions of both character and item, those stats are going to be looking a lot higher. So yeah, it is a really great combo and I'm really happy to see them adding some more combos for Chris because I'm not going to lie, they were ignoring him for a hot second there. Alright, the next combo I want to highlight here is another new one they just added with Steve Smith to give you Wheels Steve. This is a really good defensive combo. If you look at its stats there, it has a good amount of payback and it also has craze. What makes it great for defense though is that payback um, skill there. Because payback is one of those things that's really hard to plan for and really hard to avoid. So you'll be shaving off points from your opponent's um, score in rumble and challenges if you're running this in your defense deck. Another thing to highlight is Steve Smith for the legendary version of him, when he is quad fused out, does have over 50 HP, which is really rare in a character card. So that alone makes him a great character to run and if you can have the AI make this combo for you against your opponent you are definitely going to be shaving off some points in that score um, in Rumble and I highly doubt your opponents will be getting too many hundreds against you. Um, looping back around to the craze though it will get stronger turn over turn which I always love that that's always a scary prospect to have to fight in Rumble especially if your opponents don't have the cards to deal with it right away all they can do is sit there and watch it get stronger as they can do nothing to stop it and speaking of getting stronger it does have that boost skill there as well so if the AI makes any other combos on the field for you after this is made that's gonna skyrocket its attack even quicker um, so yeah that's gonna be a great combo for defense the next combo we're going to take a look at here is Ricky Spanish. You can make this combo by combining the item with Roger. This is a really kind of versatile combo that's just devastating to run on both offense and defense because it does have that payback skill and that gas. Both of those are great for um, defense as well as offense. As I mentioned before with the Steve combo, payback is a bitch to deal with on defense for your opponents, so that's fantastic. Add into the fact that once you start causing damage with it, you're going to have them gassed as well. Nothing is really going to be living against this card for very long. Um, that does work out well on offense for that same reason, especially if you have this as an opener in slot one. Because even if you don't one-shot your opponent's um, card on that first turn, the payback and gas will ensure that it is most likely dying on that very next turn. And you can actually see this in action with a different combo back during the Animal Rumble in one of my um, Rumble videos for that. You can be sure to check that out if you're curious to see how that looks. There'll be a link on screen and in the video description as well. Alright, and up next, I'm calling it now, this is going to be the MVP of the new Armed Battleground effect this time around. It is right up there with the, um, the Whale Hunter Amy of last time. Um, basically, Balloon Fight, you make this with Tina. She is a beast. She, like the um, Whale Hunter with Amy, has Punch and Bomb. When you have the quad views versions of this, I believe that Punch stat and the Bomb are up there in the 20s or near 20s, so it is a complete monster. This will be the combo to run if you want to try to one-shot your opponents on turn one in Rumble um, there to get a higher score. It also does have that boost skill there, so you can make it even stronger as you make more combos down the line. So for any of you guys that have a bunch of Tinas just lying around in your inventory, uh, now's a good time to get those prepped up and ready for Rumble if you have the arm cards here, because this is going to be a phenomenal combo to run. I do want to say though that this is definitely an offensive combo, defense wise, I would not recommend running it as true while it is a complete monster. Tina by herself as a character has pretty low HP, so if this combo doesn't get made, say the um, AI decides to play Tina on the field instead of the item first and then it doesn't get to combo that, your opponent can take out a Tina pretty easily. So I would run this on offense, but defense, maybe leave it out. Alright, and the next combo that's going to be really good for defense is with Linda Belcher to give you Ravenous Porcelain Babies. This is another great one on defense. I'm sure you can already see why. It's got that phenomenal payback skill there that's always good to have on defense. On top of that, you are going to have bombs with that as well. So that will be doing extra flank damage on your opponents, just taking off more HP from their cards to ensure an even lower score for them. It also does have craze, so once again, it will sneak up its attack higher and higher each turn. And if your opponents don't have the hijack skill on hand ready to stop it, all they can do is sit there and watch until their ultimate inevitable defeat. Um, I do want to mention Linda Belcher as a character also has 
She's not quite as good as Steve. She doesn't have over 50 HP, but she's up there. I believe Quad Fuse maxed out version of her has 47 or 48 HP, if I'm not mistaken. So pretty darn close. So really good to run on defense. Could not recommend it more. All right, and here's another new combo I wanted to highlight that they added with um, Hank to give you Paintball Hank. This is a really good support combo because of his heals there. As you can see there, it's a generic heal that can go to any card regardless of show or trait. So it can be a great healing combo to keep your scores up high in challenges and rumble. On top of that, he's great support because he does have that shield all to any card as well. So not only is he healing your cards, he will also be protecting your entire card line. He does also have the sturdy wall skill there, so he is a little bit protected himself as well. So not a bad way to go. Hank is also a great character to run in general for armed as he has a couple other great armed combos with some other cards that we might touch on later in this video or other videos. Alright, and for anyone that's been playing this game a while, especially if you were here for the last armed BGE, you knew this one was coming. Whale Hunter Amy. This was the MVP of last armed rumble. As you can see here, Based on the skills, she is a complete beast. She's got similar looking stats as the new Tina combo with that punch and bomb. When everything is quad fused out, once again, those stats are going to be closer to that 20 mark, so she punches like a monster. Um, the bombs are also devastating as well, and she also has that jab skill, so she will be eating through sturdy walls and shields, which if you remember, the shield is part of the new um, battleground effect for arm this time around, so she is a great offensive to combo to run on that to power on through. She's also really good on defense, because the Amy Wong card for the legendary when maxed out, I believe has 49 HP, and she also has bodyguard built into her, so she's already a phenomenal character to run alone on defense, and if you can get this combo made, Made, you are going to be dishing out some major damage that it's very unlikely your opponents will be able to heal all the way back up if they manage to win the match. So yeah, not too many hundreds will be played against you if you have this combo in your defense deck. And if it's in your offense deck, you're more than likely to get those hundreds yourself. Alright, and the last legendary combo we're going to go over with this card is going to be Positron Shooter Fry that you can make with Philip J. Fry. This is a pretty good support combo. It's from the last round of Armed. It does have a heal that can only go to Armed cards, so keep that in mind. That's not a generic heal like some of the other ones. It does only go to fellow Armed cards. Still though, it is a pretty good amount, and it does have Leech, so it's also self-healing. I also really like that it does have the Hijack skill as well, so you can prevent a lot of those Crazers from getting off of the ground. This is definitely a support combo for offense in my opinion. If you run a fry on defense, it's kind of risky, especially during this um, armed battleground effect. There's a lot of punches getting thrown out there because that's the other bonus is all armed cards get an additional punch added to them. So there's a high risk of fries getting one shotted. So I would not recommend running him on defense, but offense, if you've got an all armed deck, not a bad way to go to get your free heals in there to get higher scores in rumbles and challenges. Alright, now that the legendary combos are out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at the mythic combos. Unlike the legendary combos, we're going to be going over all of the mythic combos just because they're mythic cards, they deserve to be gone over, and especially I don't want to leave anybody out that maybe has one mythic but doesn't have another. I want you guys to all be able to see what you can make with your mythic cards. So without further ado, first up we're going to be looking at the combo you can make with Stewie. This is the brand new one they just added in, Knife Fight Stewie. So I absolutely love this as a defensive combo. It's also pretty good on offense, but oh man, for defense, look at that breakdown. You have a crap ton of hijack and cripple. So not only are you stealing your opponent's craze, but you're also completely keeping them from being able to attack with that cripple stat. And on top of that, speaking of craze, holy hell, look at that craze value. This will get out of hand really fast, and I predict it pretty much giving your opponents pretty devastating losses after a couple turns of crazing. Um, it can work really well on offense too because of that same craze stat there, and you do have the cripple so you do prevent your opponents from being able to cause damage to you, but on defense this is a scary nightmare of a monster that I personally would not want to get thrown against me unless I knew it was coming and had the perfect setup to counter it, because that is just scary as hell. Not to mention, I just want to say, I absolutely love the picture they used for it. Stewie just looks demented as hell, and I love it. Next up is the OG combo of Armed, Rapture Stan, which you can make with Stan. 
I'm not gonna lie, back in the day I did love this combo and everything about it, but as of recent times with some of the newer combos they've been adding into the game, it just doesn't do it for me anymore. It is nice with its um with its craze and its boost, so if you are making other combos down the line, you can make it stronger, but just based on what's in the game now, I feel like there's just better combos out there. So one thing I will mention is that Stan as a mythic card is already an armed card. So if you have him, he's still good to run in your deck because he does take advantage of the battleground effect bonuses, which is nice. But combo wise, he just doesn't do it for me as much as some of the other ones. Because um, in comparison, that um, as you saw on the last combo there with Stewie, that had pretty much double the craze value. So this is definitely a dated combo. So. Keep that in mind when considering it for your deck. Next up is Christmas Trap, which you can make with Luis. This is an older combo, but still freaking fantastic, especially on defense. If you look at the breakdown there, you got a crap ton of hijack there to keep your opponents from crazing, which you're gonna need with a lot of those craze values they're adding into the game. You got a metric crap ton of punch, so you will be dealing out a lot of damage to your opponents that Quite frankly, unless they have a healer deck set up, they're probably not healing all of that back up. And even if they did have a healer deck set up, there's still no guarantee they're getting that all back up. And on top of that, you got the Motivate there, so it's great support for your card line. Definitely a combo I would want to run in my defense deck. And depending on the right setup, if you can work it into your offense deck, it's um, not quite as good as a couple other things on offense, but with the right play and the right area there, you can definitely use it as the support for that punch and that Motivate. So something to keep in mind for that. And next up, we have the king of armed defensive support here, an RC helicopter with Bob. So this is a phenomenal support combo, both on um, in a defense deck and offense, just based on its skills alone. It has a really insane amount of shield all that goes to armed cards. So if you're running an all armed deck, this will protect your entire card line by whatever value it is for your combo when you make it. As you can see here on the preview, it's showing about 17. Um, that's pretty consistent with um, a quad fuse item and a bob that is usually leveled a little bit, but even if it's a basic level one Bob, you're still going to have a really good amount there. You also have an insane bodyguard stat, which is great, that will be protecting you from the, the crazy amount of punches that will be flying this battleground effect for the armed, as well as the bombs that will be flying from a lot of those combos as well. So really good support on that. Highly recommend running that in your armed deck, whether offense or defense, just for the support alone. And then the next one you can make is with Peggy for the Battle Axe Peggy. This is an older one, but a great offensive card. Has an insane stat for um, for Craze and an insane stat for Heal as well. So this can be one of your healers as well as one of your killers. So nothing really bad to say about Battle Axe Peggy. Even on defense, even if she gets taken out, she will do some damage before that happens. So pretty good all around great combo to run for armed there with Peggy. All right, next up is going to be the Whale Killer with Leela. This is an old one, which I'm not going to lie, I haven't been enjoying it as much as I did back in the day. It's kind of fallen out of favor with me. That's not to say it's um, bad by any means. Its stats are amazing because it's based all around making other combos to make it better. If you can make other combos down the line, it gets an insane boost to its attack and HP, and it already has an insane leech value there to kind of keep it healed up by itself. So my main gripe with this combo has nothing to do with the combo itself. It has to do with the um, the synergy of the items needed to make it as well as other um, other combos I would want to make in my um, arm deck. I was looking at the breakdown and there's just not a good crossover between the items I have that I would want to run. So it leaves quite a few um, holes in the combo synergy there for me personally. And that's kind of why it's fallen out of vogue with me. But don't let that stop you from wanting to run it. If you have enough, um, enough of the arm cards to make the synergy work, this is a great combo to run. It's a bit riskier to run on defense just because Leela alone doesn't have a lot of HP. Either way though, still great to want run on offense for that leech, and if you can make those other combos, you'll have a real monster on your hands. Next up, you got the Army Quagmire combo with Quagmire there. 
it's a pretty good support combo. You got a really good amount of bodyguard there, similar to the Bob combo. It also has an insane bomb stat. So if you're looking to cause some extra damage to your opponents, great way to go, especially on defense. I feel like that's going to be really annoying to contend with. It'll probably be taking out your opponents well before they can do jack shit about it. The cheer all is also really nice as it's not tied to just armed or any particular show. It can go down to your entire card line. So if that's made in an early slot and it builds a wall on your opponents there, you're going to have a lot of damage being done to them and yeah, it'll probably end the match on them pretty quick and get you that win. Um, it's definitely not my favorite Mythic combo, I'll admit to that, but it's not bad by any means. It's definitely got some great support potential there. Next up is Let's Get Nuts with Haley. I'm not going to lie, I'm not the biggest fan of this combo. It looks pretty similar to how the whale, um, the whale killer one with Leela looked, except the boost and recover aren't as good, and it doesn't have the leech. Instead, it has the bomb stat, so it has a bit of um, a bit of support damage there with that. But it also is somewhat trying to be trying to trying to be self reliant with its boost and recover. But all in all, I'm not a big fan of that. I just I don't like those skills together. They just don't sit well with me. So. If it was me personally, I don't have Haley, but if I did, I probably would not be running this in my deck personally. Uh, another gripe I have with this combo though is you can make this exact same combo with the Klaus character card as well. So both characters make the same combo, which kind of feels lazy to me by the developers. I kind of wish they would have given her a different combo with it instead of giving it the same one as another card. But I don't know, maybe I'm biased on that just because I don't like this combo to begin with, but either way, not the biggest fan of it. Speaking of not being fans of combos, here's another one I'm not too keen on, Rocket Launcher Bullock you can make with Bullock. It's true he has an insane jab skill which will break through pretty much almost any wall or shield stat, and it does have the bomb to flank damage your opponents, but that's all it's got going for it. It doesn't have any other sort of support, it doesn't have any way to heal itself or protect itself, it's all about just trying to dish out damage, which it's nice, but if you look at its attack stat, it doesn't have that high of an attack to begin with. So. That's kind of why I don't really like this combo very much. I definitely would rather recommend running some of those other um, Mythic combos instead. And next up is one of the kings of armed, Hatchet Boomhauer. Hatchet Boomhauer has been one of the best combos to have for armed for a very long time. And as you can see here, for good reason. It's got a really good hijack stat to kind of just block your opponents from getting their craze off the ground. He's got a really good craze stat of his own, and he's got that jab to break through the walls and shields. So he's a phenomenal one to run on offense and defense both, so nothing bad to say about Hatchet there. I'm actually really glad that he has a workable combo for Armed because Boomhauer has been one of those characters that has been pretty much more or less ignored by the developers since game launch. But ever since they made him into a mythic card, they finally started giving him some support, and I'm glad that we finally have a battleground effect here where we can see some really good use out of him again. And the last mythic combo is going to be Sniper Zoidberg with Zoidberg. So this is going to be a great one to run on defense because of that insanely high payback stat there. On top of that, you got a crap ton of punch as well. Plus, not to mention the jab, you're eating through the shields and the walls. This is going to be dealing out some pretty heavy damage on your opponents. It can work on offense as well, but keep in mind its attack stat is on the lower end. But either way, a really great combo. Highly recommend running it if you have him. Alright, the next item in the box that we're going to be taking a look at is Katana Trisha Takanawa. So this is an older armed um, item card from last time, however it feels like it's new because last time around they released more new cards than they had time to actually release in boxes, so it never actually made a release in a box. It was in a chance box I think a week ago or so, but in an official um, new Thursday box release, this is the first time it has been in one of those. So I'm finally glad to see they finally released it. It's been a hot minute and I know everybody was really mad it wasn't released last time, so I guess better late than never, right Kong? Anyways, as far as items go, I really like this one for defense. It's got a really good HP stat at 54, and it does have payback, which is a great skill on defense, as I mentioned before. It does have the shield there as well that can go to any card, which is really good for support, and it's got the leech. I do have one concern with this card, though, on defense, just because, um, not just in general, I have a concern with it for the current Battleground effect. Since there is extra punches getting thrown into the mix 
for the um, Battleground effect for Armed. My only concern is, will this be one-shotted by those with the crazy punch stat? It's true it will be shielded by the Battleground effect as well, so that might counterbalance it, but that's the only concern I really have with it. Other than that, I think it will be great to run on defense, and then the 11 attack is not horrible, so it can work pretty well on offense as well there. But before we go into that, let's take a look at the combos just to make sure. So actually looking at the combos right off the bat, as you can see here, this only makes 39 combos across the game, which is actually way less than the other items. So that's already kind of a big concern with this card. Um, this can work out well in your deck as long as you have good synergy. If you can't work this in with your other characters and your other items to get a good combo synergy, maybe not the best item to run. However, if you can run it and make it work, it's not horrible. It does make um, some of the combos we just went over a minute ago. I'm only going to go over a couple other ones that we have not touched upon yet, and then only ones that I feel like are worth mentioning. So first up, right off the bat, is going to be a different combo you can make with Chris um, Griffin to make Chris Pimple. This is an older combo you can make with Armed, but it's still a really good one. What I really like about it is it's hijack stat and it's cripple all. Because cripple all, if you have enough of those cards on the field, will just completely stall out your opponents from being able to attack at all, which I love. So Chris is actually a really good character to run in armed because especially with his new combo they just added, has a lot of good support there. And the next one I want to touch on is with Klaus to give you Cartel Klaus. This is a phenomenal combo to run on defense. Klaus by himself when quad fused out has I believe 60 HP or around there which is just great for defense. It's top tier A1 in that regards there. Combo wise it also has great skills. It's got the hijack which is going to help you kind of fight your opponent's um, little craze army they'll have. It's got gas so once you get one attack off your opponent's going to have to just stand there and take it and watch their cards HP dwindle turn after turn until they're just a uh, shallow husk of their former selves. Not to mention you also have leech built into this card so it's going to be pretty hard for your opponents to kill this combo. So a really great one to run on defense if you really just want to annoy the crap out of your opponents. And the only other combo I feel worth mentioning for the legendaries with this card would be with Hank to give you Chainsaw Hank. It is an older combo but still a really good one just based on its stats alone. He is a crazer so he will be building his attack pretty quickly. He's also got that gas and payback combo there so really good if you want to just make quick work of whatever card it's attacking. Um, nothing's really going to live against this card for very long between taking payback damage, gas damage, and the attack going up turn over turn. I do want to mention though while those stats do, like they, do look like they are really good on defense, which don't get me wrong, those are great skills for defense, Hank as a character is not a great character to run on defense. He is really easy to kill, so um, if you're going to run this card and this combo on defense hoping it gets made, that's going to be a very high risk, high reward scenario, and I wish you the best of luck if you're going to go for it, but me personally, probably not going to be throwing that in my defense deck because I don't feel like giving my opponents easy win opportunities to one-shot a Hank Hill. And then there are a couple mythic combos that this card will make that we did not cover on the previous item, so let's just take a brief look at those. First up is Sniper Stewie with Stewie. This is going to be a really good defensive combo for you in your defense deck. It's got an insane hijack skill, so you can prevent that craze army from taking off against you, and it's got an insane amount of punch. This is going to be a great kind of buffer combo against your opponents in your defense deck so that they can't score well against you. In fact, it could even be the reason they lose depending on how they go about it. Alright, and the other combo I want to touch on for the Mythics is Santa Killer Haley, which you can make with Haley. See, this is what I was talking about from that last item. I would have preferred having a different combo with Haley than that crummy one they showed before, because I'm not going to lie, this Haley combo I actually really like, especially for defense. It's got the payback, it's got an insane bodyguard skill to block the punches, and it's got a good chunk of motivate to fellow armed cards, so it's good support as well in an armed deck. I would much rather run this combo in my um in my defense deck that I would that other piece of crap combo that you can make with her for armed. And the final legendary item in the box is going to be another old one, Cat with Gun. This is going to be your attacking item. It's got a really good attack stat at 20. Anything above like 16, 18, anything higher like that for an item, that's your attacker right there. Any combo this makes is going to have pretty much as high as you can get for a base attack stat on that combo. So A1 for an offense deck for that. 
not too impressed by its skills. It's got Cheer All and Bomb, which is nice, but for this particular card, it's going to be all about the combos you can make. I would not recommend running this card in a defense deck because 34 HP is really low, really easy to one-shot. And for the combos, it makes 42 combos across the game at this point in time. Um, a lot of them we have already covered earlier in the video, but there are a couple that I do want to just go over that we have not yet. The first one being Santa Killer Steve. This is another combo you can make with Steve. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, Steve is great for a defense deck. And while I don't think this is as good of a combo as the other newer one is, it still has its place on defense because it does have a good amount of punch when it is quad fused out. It's got the jab to be breaking through walls and shields, and it can actually get stronger with every combo you make because of the boost skill. So I felt it was still worth mentioning for defense and letting you know there was another Steve combo in there. And the only other combo I wanted to mention for this card that we have not touched on already with another thing is Mustache Gun with the Mythic Bob. So it's a pretty, pretty balanced combo. It's not something I love or hate, but I just wanted to mention it because it is a Mythic combo. It does have shield all to armed cards, so it can be pretty good support for your armed deck. And it has a pretty good amount of punch as well, so it can be a really hard hitting attacker there. Um, it also can work well on defense as a buffer, but yeah, not my favorite, but not my least favorite either. Just thought it was worth mentioning because it is a mythic combo that is not horrible. And that's going to do it for all three of the legendary items in this box. Now let's take a quick look at the characters. First up is Eugene Belcher. So Eugene is from the Bob's Burgers show. He is one of those rare cards for um, characters that has an innate trait. He is a musical card, so he will come in handy during the music battleground effects for you to take advantage of those buffs. Um, as far as characters go, he is actually a pretty good character to have a lot of copies of, as he does make quite a few OP combos across a few battleground effects. Um, and he's great to run just in general for Bob's Burgers in Siege. Skill-wise and stat-wise, he does lean a bit more towards offense than defense with the 16 attack. His HP is on the lower end near 40. His skills are alright. I do like the gas damage if you can get an attack off there. He does have hijack, which is nice to stall out your opponents, and he does have 8 motivate, so he has pretty good support as well. As for his combos, Gene currently combos with 178 different cards throughout the game. I will not be going over all of them as that is an insane amount of combos to cover. However, we will be taking a brief look at the different ones you can make going on for the current battleground effects, which are, again, athletic and armed. And I will also go over a couple other just top combos that I like from him in general, just so you have an idea of what to look forward to if you happen to get him. So first off, right off the bat, as you can see here for Athletic, he makes Gaga Ball. That is probably one of the most OP combos to run for Athletic, as you might have saw in my um, Rumble video from last time. This is going to be a really killer one to run for the punch value and the jab value alone. It makes it really easy to try to one-shot things, and it does have the gas as well. So anything that does happen to survive that first hit, it's not surviving a second hit. It's going down, so it is one of the best combos for him, not gonna lie, it definitely easily makes one of my top five combos for him pretty easily. All right, as for armed combos, Gene does have a couple of different ones he can make. First up is Fart in a Jar. This armed combo is all right. It's definitely kind of a staller combo. It does have Sturdy Wall, Cripple All, and Gas, so it's one of those combos where you just wanna stall out your opponents and then slowly chip away at them. Normally, those are pretty good stats to run on defense for a defensive combo. Like I mentioned earlier, though, I'm not keen on running Gene on defense too often as he can be one-shotted pretty easily, especially since the Battleground effect right now has added punches thrown in there. It feels really risky to run that just to try to get something that's going to be like a slow stall out for the, um, the win there. So, not my favorite combo to run anymore for armed, but just thought it's worth mentioning for those of you who are trying to get ideas for an armed deck and what you can do with this box. So has another athletic combo with Freezer Dome Gene. This is an OP as hell combo. Once again, easily makes my top five list for him just because he's a crazer. And on top of that, he's got Cripple and Bodyguard. So he's great support there for your card line to just protect them as well as just stall out damage against your opponents while getting crazy strong turn over turn. So he is definitely a great combo to run. I know that's actually a combo that a lot of the top whales are running in Swole right now as well at the top. They're running 
pretty much nothing but those and that's what they focus their training on so definitely an OP combo easily top five combo for Gene. And the other armed combo that you can make with Gene is Balloon Sniper. So this is a pretty decent um, armed combo. When it, everything is quad fused out, it does have an insane amount of punch and it does have the boost skill so it can get stronger as well. Um, it does have heal which does only go to Bob's Burgers unfortunately so unless you're running an all Bob's Burgers deck you're not going to see too much use of that heal. Um, but yeah it's pretty good honestly in my opinion it's a great combo to run for siege for that reason though if you're running a bob's burger siege deck this is a great one to run because it has a lot of damage output and it is a healer to bob's burgers card so it's a better fit there in my opinion than it would be in an armed deck unless like i said you are specifically running a bob's burgers armed deck in which case go wild have fun with it so those are going to be all of the combos you can make for the two current Battleground effects going on. There are also a couple other ones I just wanted to mention that I think are pretty OP combos and worth mentioning. The first one is going to be Diorama Gene for Educated, which you all know, for those of you who have seen my, um, my Rumble video from Educated, you all know how much I love this combo. It is fantastic. It punches like a truck. Um, it's great support to Educated for the Motivate, and it is a generic healer that can heal any card. Um, as you can see here, I've already started my combo mastery research on it, and I currently have um, level 2 researching as we speak, so I'm taking that boy up to level 2 mastery because that's how many of the stones I dropped into him to get that. So I felt he was worth my um, hard-earned mastery stones there. So that should speak volumes of my, um, my, my thoughts on this combo. But yeah... Quite easily one of my favorite combos for Gene. Highly recommend it for, um, not athletic, for, um, for educated. So yeah, if you don't have them researched and you have Gene and the cards to make it, get on that. And lastly is everyone's easily new favorite music combo, One Man Musical. You make this combo with Gene with quite a few music items and there is nothing not to love about it. He's got Craze, he's got Hijack, and Leech. So he's a self-healer, he crazes out of control, and he prevents your opponents from crazing against you. There's absolutely nothing not to love about that. He's great for offense as well as defense during a Music Battleground effect, because I know a lot of people like to run this combo, as well as um, Super Dance Squad, which is another crazer. So this is like a perfect counter to that. So quite easily, one of the top combos with it. It's, you can see why it's on my top five list there. And the other character in the box is Bender. Bender is a pretty balanced out character. His stats don't really lean one way towards offense or defense. He's just pretty in the middle there with 14 attack and 38 HP. His skills lead him a bit more towards defense with the sturdy wall and the payback, and he does have the leech to be self-healing there a bit. But what really comes into play with Bender is he does have some pretty nice combos. So once again, we will be taking a look at the combos you can make during the current Battleground effects first, and then we'll touch on a couple of my top favorite combos you can make with Bender. First off though, let me note that you can make 182 combos across the game right now currently with Bender, so quite a few options there. So first up is an athletic combo you can make with Bender for Sewer Surfer Bender. Um, it's not a bad combo, it's definitely more of a support one though. He does have the sturdy wall to kind of protect himself on defense there. It's got the motivate to fellow athletic cards, so definitely support there. Um, you do have the, the gas there as well to kind of chip away at your opponent slowly. I'll be honest, it's not one of my favorite athletic combos. There are plenty of others out there I would rather run instead of him, but it is an option if you do have Bender and some athletic cards, but those are kind of my thoughts on him. He's meant to be more like support and defense than anything else. He's not going to be winning you any fights really quickly. As for armed combos, Bender actually makes quite a few different ones of those. First off, we'll be looking at Bender's Weapons as one of them you can make. Bender's Weapons is strictly speaking a support combo. He has skills lean towards support entirely with that shield all to fellow um, armed cards and bombs for flank damage. Um, as far as armed combos go, there are other ones I would rather run instead of him to be honest, but I just thought it's worth mentioning for any of those who have maybe quite a few Benders and want to run a lot of support for their arm deck. Not a horrible way to go, but there are other options that me personally I would rather run. Next up for armed combos is Slaying Tonight. This is a really good defensive combo to run because when everything is quad fused out, it's got hella support skills and it's pretty tanky. It's got a good amount of sturdy wall, 
Um, it does have shield to one fellow armed card, and it cheers all to all of your armed cards. So if you can get that set up, if the AI gets that set up for you in slot one in a defense deck and then starts playing other armed cards down the line, you're going to be causing your opponents some pretty big damage before they can um, try to come back from it. So really good defensive combo to run on armed with Ender there. I really do like that one. Plus, hey, it's, um, it's Christmas theme. Who doesn't like Christmas? Except for Robot Santa. Actually, you know what? Lore drop there for Futurama. I actually think Robot Santa probably loves Xmas because he gets to kill everybody. So yeah, who knows? Either way though, I really like that combo for defense. Oh, and there is one more athletic combo you can make with Bender in the Gender Bender. I actually almost overlooked this one because I forgot it shares a trait with Fighter as well. So this is a combo that is both athletic and Fighter. So if Fighter is going on, this combo also benefits from that Battleground effect as well. And if there was ever one that was being shared with both athletic and Fighter going on at the same time, you'd get double buffed. Um, as far as the combo goes though, that's about as far as the as far as I can say that I like it. It does have Sturdy Wall, which is, I guess, nice for defense. It does have the Recover skill there, so it can get more HP when you make other combos. But outside of that, I'm not the biggest fan of it. It does have Cheer to one fellow Futurama card, so it can work out for you in a Futurama deck in Siege. Or if you're running all Futurama cards in your regular deck, it can work out for you there as well. But I don't know, it just doesn't really do it for me. So I don't really like it too much as a combo. Props though on its design, I love the idea of the gender bender with Bender in a 2-2 there and carrying his little fairy wand. That's freaking brilliant. I'll give it props on that. And then the last armed combo that you can make with Bender, you might recognize as the pre-combo of this box, Assassin Bender. So I already gave you my thoughts on the pre-combo for this, so I'm not going to really go over it too much again, but just keep in mind the comboed version. It's always going to be way stronger than the pre-combo. So yeah, everything I said about it earlier in the, the box review of the pre-combo pretty much goes double for the combo version of this card. So that's going to do it for the athletic and the armed combos. Now let me do a quick top five list of my favorite combos with Bender here that weren't in those categories because he has quite a few combos that are fantastic. So first up is Bender's Ducklings for Animal. This is a really, really good combo to run during Animal. It's nothing but support, but it's also a killer in and of its own right, because it is a Crazer, so it does get stronger turn over turn, but what's really cool about it is its support. It is a healer for Animal cards for an insane amount, so you will get a good amount of heal to an Animal deck, and it has Motivate to Animal cards as well. So it's great support while also being a killer in his own right which already makes it a phenomenal combo in my opinion if you're going to be running an animal deck there. Next up you have Bending School Grad for Educated, a really great combo for both offense and defense there just based on his um, skills alone. He's got Hijack and Sturdy Wall. I love both of those for defense because um, obviously you got the wall there to protect you from getting one shot at easily and you got the Hijack to keep your opponents from crazing. Not to mention, speaking of crazing, Bending School Grad has the craze stat itself so it will be crazing turn over turn. So I just love that combination of skills together and it is a top tier combo for Educated because of that. Next up would be Jose Servo combo with him for during the Drunk Battleground effect. For those of you who saw my gameplay from the Drunk Rumble, I had a lot of fun running a bunch of these bastards. Um, he is a great healer to Drunk there with a good heal stat, two fellow Drunk cards. He's got an insane amount of punch when everything is quad fused out, and he's self-healing with Leech. So he is just a great combo to run in general during Drunk. All right, and we're getting into them deep cuts with this next one, Werecar. This is a unique combo to Bender that you can only make with a vehicle card. And there is currently only one legendary vehicle card in the game, Golf Ball Escape. So this is a really good combo because, I'll be honest, it has Crazed and it has the Leech, which are great skills to have together. The Quad Fuse version of um, it, when you have both quads making the combo, have an insane amount of Leech to go with the Craze, so it's self-healing while 
well, it builds its attack turn over turn. And I'm not gonna lie, I love the concept of Bender as a robot turning into a car like a werewolf. It's just fantastic. That was a really fun episode of Futurama, so this is quite easily one of my favorite combos for him, despite the fact that I actually don't have a quad fuse of golf ball escape, which I am low-key salty about. So Kong, if anybody from Kong headquarters is watching, maybe hook your boy up with a couple copies of golf ball escape so he can have some fun with this combo. But yeah, back on topic with it, I love this combo. I love the design, I love its skills, and it's just, I like the fact that it's unique. You don't ever really see anybody running this because of how it's made. Um, at the lower levels of play, you might see it a bit more because there are a bunch of vehicle um, items for that, but up here in, um, at the top level of play, not too many people have quad fuses of that card for Golf Ball Escape that would be running it, and even the people that do don't ever really run it. I think I can count the times I've ever come across this combo on one hand, and it took me by surprise because I didn't even know it was a combo at the time, so major props to that to surprise me. And speaking of surprising me, we're going further down the rabbit hole on this last one here, Bender's Orphanarium. I had no idea this combo even existed until I was looking at the combos for this box review here. Um, you can make this card with Bender and any money card, however similar to the Wear Car combo, there is only one legendary card in the game right now for items that is considered a money card for Rich, which is Bag of Nickels, so this is the only way to make that with legendary cards. So. That's probably why I've never seen it before, because no one really runs that combination. But looking at this combo, I love the breakdown. It is a generic healer and a generic shielder, so you can heal and shield any one card, which makes this an OP support card, because I can only imagine what the stats of that would look like when everything is quad fused out. I would imagine both of those would be probably somewhere in the 20s, so that is phenomenal. I love the concept of that card as support, and I low key wish I. I had some um, quad fuse bag of nickels so I could run a bunch in my deck. All right, and that's gonna do it for the characters in this box. Now let's take a brief look at the epic pre combos. All right, first up, we're gonna face our fears with the shark killer card here. I absolutely love that tagline for it face your fears. That's great. Okay, so for epic pre combos, as far as this one goes, I actually am kind of digging its spread for its skills there. I do like the idea of having a card with Motivate, Cripple All, and Leech. Something about that combination just feels right to me. Feels great for the support, because you got the Motivate to any card, you got the Cripple All keeping your opponents from attacking you, and you got the Leech so it's self healing. So I'm really digging that spread. Stat wise, it's alright. It's kind of balanced out there with 14 attack and 41 HP. Um,. I don't really see it as being too good on defense. I see it more as being offensive support. So that's kind of the place I'm seeing with that pre-combo in a deck. And the other epic pre-combo in the box is Army Quagmire. This one I do see as being a bit more supportive on defense, but I still am not feeling it entirely because the HP is on the lower end there at 42. It does have the bodyguard there to protect it a bit, but still, anything when it comes to a pre-combo less than 50 HP, I'm very iffy about running in my deck personally, especially an epic one. I have pretty high standards for epic pre-combos, and I'm not going to lie, this one does fall short of those standards. Um, it does have a little bit of cheer all and some bomb there for some more support, but yeah, not my favorite um, card as far as epic pre-combos. There are definitely better ones out there. Alright, to recap, the legendary pre-combo of this box, despite being a clearly offensive pre-combo, is surprisingly pretty good in my opinion. I don't absolutely hate it, which is very rare for an offensive pre-combo when it comes to my critiquing of them. I'm definitely, definitely lean more towards defensive when it comes to the pre-combo boys, so I'm real, real happy about that. As for the items in the box, I kind of like all of them to be honest. Purity Dads have nothing bad to say about it. I'm fine. I'm really happy that they finally put Trisha Takanawa in a box because we've been waiting on that since the last Armed Battleground effect. And Cat with Gun is just good for offense in general. I got nothing bad to say about them. As for the characters, both are pretty good ones to have multiple copies of. They do make some pretty good combos across different Battleground effects. Um, they do have some pretty good combos to run for Athletic and Armed as well. Don't get me wrong, there are other combos out there that I might prioritize over them for those Battleground effects, at least for the Armed ones. For Athletic, Jean is definitely up there as a killer. 
Um, but yeah, not bad by any means. They're both pretty good, solid characters. Epic pre-combo wise, they're just all right. They're not that impressive to me. To be honest, they kind of fall flat. They're not horrible, but not great either. So when I take all of that into consideration, while this box does have a lot going on for it that I like, it doesn't like wow me. And at the same time, it's not absolutely horrible. It's just kind of in the middle there for me. So I'm gonna give it a three out of five Golden Turd rating. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, please be sure to click that like button. And if you're new to the channel or haven't already, please click that subscribe button. And be sure to click that little bell icon so you get notified of new uploads. Thanks again, guys. Peace.